Hi, Bookish Besties. My name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. And if you're already subscribed, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today, it is time to do my August TBR. <music> Right, friends. So I made the rather impulsive decision that for the month of August, I was going to participate in yet another readathon. That is Pick Pongathon, which is hosted by Crystal from Bond Book Reviews. I had no intention whatsoever of participating in another readathon in August because there is quite a lot going on for me in August. Work is expected to pick up. My next grad course is starting. And then perhaps most importantly is I'm going to be announcing my own readathon in August. And that video will actually be the next video that you see after this. So needless to say, I didn't really need to add another thing onto my plate. However, some of my wonderful friends from the Amazing Readathon are going to be participating and hosting and so I wanted to go ahead and join in on the fun. Now for that reason along with several others I'm actually not going to be pulling from my challenge cup today. One is because I have a stack of books currently on my priority TBR that I really need to get to ASAP. They are primarily books that have come into me recently like from book of the month. Additionally there are a bunch of books for projects that I'm doing namely of course the one that I'm doing with Sarah over at Sarah's nightstand and then I have an additional project that I'm tentatively starting. I've only read one book for it so far so we're gonna see how it goes but I have several books on my radar to read for that project. Additionally it's really no longer a priority for me to be pulling from that challenge cup. We are only at the end of July at this moment and I basically satisfied almost every single reading challenge that I have undertaken for this year. Also on top of that my physical TBR has dwindled significantly since the start of this year. I only have a handful of books remaining so there are very few books left on my physical TBR that are still in that challenge cup. So for the most part it's really no longer a priority for me to be pulling from that challenge cup, which I have recently completely redone, by the way. So I will be bringing it back next month, but I feel perfectly fine not pulling from it this month just because it's really no longer a priority for me as I'm basically already satisfying everything that I need to be satisfying without pulling from it. So today really what I'm going to do is I'm going to be playing my TBR game as per usual. And then I'm also going to be talking about some of the other books that are on my priority TBR that I do plan to read. Now for Pick Pongathon, I'm not going to be knowing the prompts until July 31st, August 1st. And because I need to get this video up before that point, I obviously do not know the prompts for that at this time. So my goal is that anything that I pull for my TBR game or for my priority reads, I'm going to be able to fit into the readathon. And if not, that is totally okay. I'm allowing myself some grace and some flexibility here. We are definitely going to be prioritizing the prompts for the readathon for sure. Now, of course, before we get into building August TBR, I need to quickly run through how I did with July's TBR. So the very first challenge pull for that month was to read the next book in the Savage Land series by Stacey Marie Brown and I actually decided to go ahead and DNF that series. This is one of those series where the books pick up immediately after the last book left off. And so if there's any type of gap in between reading the books, when the next book starts, you're almost completely lost. And that's really how I was. And I just really didn't care to try to figure out what was happening or where we were in the story. I had tried to find some spoiler filled summaries of what happened in the previous books and I just couldn't. I didn't really want my mind to have to work really hard, just kind of like figure out what I was missing, what I was forgetting and all of that good stuff. There are plenty of other series I'm far more excited to continue than this one. So I am ultimately DNFing that one and the books that I own in that series are going to go up on Pango. The next challenge pull was to read The Nature of Fragile Things by Susan Meisner, which I did read. Next was to read The Family Remains by Lisa Jewell, which I also did read. The next challenge pull was actually a challenge prompt and that was to read a book that I picked without reading the blurb. And for this, I actually ended up selecting Bright Young Women by Jessica Knoll because this is a book that I don't think I ever read the blurb from. It is just a book that I had seen going around booktube and it's what caused me to add it to my TBR. And then of course, Sarah selected it for me in the project that we are doing together. So I thought that it would be perfect. It would be a way for me to knock out this reading challenge prompt and to read a book that is currently a part of that project. So I did read that. Challenge poll number five was also a challenge prompt. And this challenge prompt was to read a book that had a plot similar to another book. So part of the reading challenge was to read both of the books that had the two similar plots. And for this, I selected The Book of Two Ways by Jodi Pico, which from my understanding has a plot similar to Maybe in Another Life by Taylor Jenkins Reid. And I did ultimately end up reading The Book of Two Ways by Jodi Pico. Moving on into the gameplay prompts, the first prompt I needed to satisfy was to read a book that was on someone else's TBR. And for that, I actually selected Middle of the Night by Riley Sager. I ultimately had this on my TBR to satisfy another one of the gameplay prompts, but this was literally on so many people's TBR for July, I could not pass up the opportunity to use it. So I went ahead and did, and of course I did read it. Then I had to read a book over 500 pages. And for this, I originally selected Empire of the Damned by Jay Kristoff, but it didn't take long for me, maybe a chapter or two to get into 
that book and realized that my brain was just not in a place that was going to be able to focus on this book. So ultimately I was going to read All the Colors of the Dark by Chris Whitaker, which was one of those recent book of the month selections. And that was fully my plan. And then I kind of got a bug up my butt and decided to start that new project that I mentioned earlier. And so for that project, I ended up reading All Roads Lead Here by Mary Anna Zapata. And that is actually almost 600 pages. It's an almost 600 page contemporary. So I definitely did satisfy this prompt, but not in the way that I was expecting to. Next, I needed to read a book with fall vibes. And that was the prompt that I originally selected middle of the night for. But ultimately, I ended up reading A Talent for Murder by Peter Swanson to satisfy this one. Then I actually had two back to back punishment draws for the game. And both of the punishment prompts were to read TBR veterans. So for those, I ended up selecting The Orphan's Tale by Pam Genoff and Becoming Family by Alicia Whistler, both of which I read. And then the very final prompt I needed to satisfy was to read a beautiful book. And for that, I selected The Honey Witch by Sydney J. Shield, which I did read. So I ended up satisfying all of the prompts for my July TBR. And so no punishment will be taken for this month. We are going into August with a clean slate. And even if we weren't, I probably would use my numerous get out of jail free card that I currently have hoarded along with the jacks and stuff. So those are just kind of building up, but no need to use them because I satisfied all of the prompts. All right. So now that that's out of the way and because we're not doing any challenge pulls, we're going to go ahead and get right into the gameplay. All right, everybody. It is time for the next round of the My Bad TBR game. Just as a reminder, last round, we got red all in the home base here. And so red and blue are officially out of the game. They are safe. So now we just have to work on getting the final green and the last two yellows into their home base. So for the time being, I'm still going to be drawing my color cards here to see which color I'm moving, but it's very soon going to get to a point where I'm not going to have the ability to do that because the movements for each of the pawns is going to be limited as we get to the end of this round of gameplay. So what I'm probably going to do after this month, I'm probably just going to let myself choose which color I move depending on the card that I get, if that makes sense, just so we can ensure that all of the pawns get into home base. So as per usual, we are going to stick with the normal six draws unless the board is unkind to me. Hopefully it is not because it has been pretty unkind to me the last two rounds. So I could use a little break, especially with everything else going on in August. But we are going to see starting, of course, with draw number one. All right, so ace is either a get out of start card or move one. So I have two pawns that can move. Let me flip the board and we will choose which pawn to move based on the prompt. Okay, so I know you can't really see the prompt over here, but that is choose pawn color. And that just means if I were to land here, the next round I get to actively choose which pawn color I move. This is going to be more relevant when I have all four colors out on the playing field. Not so much right now, but of course, if I landed on this, I wouldn't have a book to read. And then this one right here would move towards debut, which which just means I have to read a debut author. All right, so I thought about it for a minute and I currently do not have any debut authors on my physical TBR. And there are definitely no debut authors on the stack of priority reads that I have. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and select the other option just because I think it would be harder for me to find a debut author that I want to prioritize for the month of August, especially right now, not knowing what the book of the month selections are. If I knew what they were going to be, chances are there would be a debut author in their somewhere that I could select. But as of right now, not knowing that, I think I'm going to play it safe and do a non-book option. Okay, so I flipped the board and I'm going to go right here to choose pawn color. And my next draw, basically, I can choose whether to move the green or the yellow pawn. All right, so my very first draw was an ace and the color yellow. And this landed me on the square to choose the color of my pawn. And that basically meant that the next time I drew, I didn't have to draw a color tile. I could choose what color pawn I wanted to use based on my own discretion. So obviously there was no book chosen for this one. All right, draw number two. All right, so we got a number seven and seven, I either have the option of moving one pawn seven or I can split the moves between two pawns. That's pretty much a strategic movement. Like if I have somebody in home base right here and I just need to move three, then I can move one three and another one four. I really don't need that right now. So I think at this point, it's just going to be based on the prompt. So if I move this guy seven, it would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, more than one timeline. This one would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wormy pick, which is the Sid Bookworms Patreon. And then over there, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dice roll. And dice roll just means that I have to roll die and pick a book based on the page count. So I think for this, the easiest one that's going to be for me to satisfy is going to be the more than one timeline. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, more than one timeline. And that gets this guy way closer to being in his safety zone. Next, I drew the number seven and I chose the color yellow to move. And it landed me on the prompt of reading a book with multiple timelines. And 
and for that I am going to select All the Colors of the Dark by Chris Whitaker. I was actually really looking forward to reading this one last month before I ended up selecting All Roads Lead Here by Mariana Zapata to satisfy the prompt of reading a book over 500 pages. So I am very hyped to get to this one. I have never read anything by Chris Whitaker but just the synopsis of this and the style of his writing seems like it could potentially be something right up my alley. This says 1975 is a time of change in America. The Vietnam War is ending, Muhammad Ali is fighting Joe Frazier, and in the small town of Montclair, Missouri, girls are disappearing. When the daughter of a wealthy family is targeted, the most unlikely hero emerges, Patch, a local boy who saves the girl and in doing so leaves heartache in his wake. Patch and those who love him soon discover that the line between triumph and tragedy has never been finer and that their search for answers will lead them to truths that could mean losing one another forever. A missing person mystery, a serial killer thriller, a love story, a unique twist on each, All the Colors of the Dark is about what lurks in the shadows of obsession and the blinding light of hope. I'm getting chills just reading that synopsis. It sounds absolutely phenomenal. It definitely sounds like there's going to be a literary aspect, certainly a genre blend for sure, and I am absolutely here for it. This is mostly historical in nature, but I do believe that there are some other timelines thrown in, and I'm just absolutely excited for this. This sounds like it's going to be wonderful, and I'm very much hoping to enjoy this. All right, draw number three. All right, we got a jack and that is a skip card. So I get to hold on to this one just in case I land on something that I am not in the mood to satisfy, I can use this. I have a pile currently of jacks and kings waiting for me. So this is just going to go with that one. All right, then next I drew a jack, which is a skip card. So no book is selected. Draw number four. Speaking of kings, I just drew another king. That is a get out of jail free card. So again, no movement for that. Next, I drew a king, which is a get out of jail free, which I mentioned I have currently a stockpile of. And of course, no book is selected. So currently I've drawn four times and I only have one book. So I'm probably going to extend this past six draws, but let's see what draw number five gets me. Okay, well that automatically adds a draw anyway. So let's go ahead and see which color I'm going to use. Green. Okay, let me go ahead and flip the board and we will see what we get. One, two. Oh, choose pawn color again. So once again, I get to choose the pawn color that I use on the next round and no book is going to be selected. So this is definitely going to have a few more draws to it, I think. All right, then I drew the number two and the color green. That actually once again landed me on the choose the color of your pawn prompt. So once again, no book was selected. Draw number six. All right, we got another king. I do not know what is going on with the draws this round, folks. I mean, the past two rounds, the board has done nothing but punish me. And this time it's like, no, we don't even want you to select one book. So we're just gonna keep on going until I have at least, I wanna say three to four books that I can add to my TBR. Yet again, I drew another king. I had no idea what was going on with this round of gameplay, y'all, but it seemed like draw after draw after draw, I was not getting a book to read, which was drastically different from my last two rounds of gameplay. I have no idea what was going on here. Again, no book is selected. All right, draw number seven. This is a very straightforward draw. I can move any of the pawns forward three. So this guy would be one, two, three, draw again. This would be one, two, three, romance or contemporary. And then over here is one, two, three, AI chooses my read. Oh my goodness, okay. So I'm actually really intrigued to do the AI chooses my read, but because I have so many books that are really a priority right now, I don't think I can risk it. So I'm going to choose the romance contemporary one. So let me flip the board. All right, one, two, three, romance or contemporary. That is going to be my next selection. All right, finally, we got a draw where I could actually select a book and I chose to move the yellow pawn. For this, it landed me on the prompt of reading a romance slash contemporary. And boy, do I have a lot of options that I could potentially use to satisfy this. But the one that is definitely the highest priority is Life's Too Short by Abby Jimenez. Y'all already know how I feel about Abby Jimenez. She is definitely my favorite contemporary romance author of all time. I absolutely adore her. This is the final book that I need to read in order to have read her entire published works. This is also going to be the completion of the friend zone trilogy which I have absolutely adored. I've given both the friend zone and the happy ever after playlist 4.5 stars and I'm certain that I'm going to enjoy this one as well. I'm hyped but nervous for this. This is one of those situations where you find a book intimidating because it's by one of your favorite authors and you're really really worried that it's not going to live up to the hype but I'm going to be brave and I'm going to be reading this one in August. Okay so so far I really only have two books so I want to get at least one more so let's see what this next draw gets me.
All right, y'all. Well, I really don't have a choice in the matter with this one because this, from what I count, is exactly nine spaces into home base. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And that guy is safe. But of course, no book is chosen for that one. So we are going to draw yet again. All right. Then I drew the number nine and the color yellow. And luckily, this actually allowed me to get one of my yellow pawns easily into home base. So I could not miss that opportunity. So now we only have one yellow and one green pawn out on the playing field. And we are so incredibly close to finishing this round of gameplay. All right, we got eight in green. Let me flip the board and we'll see what he lands on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, color generator. Okay, so that basically means I have to use a color generator and select a book that has that color on the cover. All right, then I drew the number eight and the color green. That landed me on the prompt of color generator. So I had to go ahead and use a random color generator and then I have to read a book with that color on the cover. So when I did the random color generator, it landed me on something called patina Green. And for that, I ended up selecting The Dream Daughter by Diane Chamberlain. I feel like especially down here, you get more of the patina green vibes. This is like definitely the closest thing that I had. And once again, this is perfect because this is the third and final book that Sarah recommended to me and I need to get to it as soon as possible. This is another one that I'm extremely, extremely hyped for. I have read three other Diane Chamberlain's in the past and I have loved absolutely every single one of them. Her stories are just so incredibly compelling and well-written. And this one is going to be different because it has kind of like a time travel aspect to this. And her other books are definitely more firmly historical in nature. So I'm very intrigued to see what she's going to be able to do with this one. It says, when Carly Sears, a young woman widowed by the Vietnam War, receives the news that her unborn baby girl has a heart defect, she is devastated. It is 1970 and she is told that nothing can be done to help her child. But her brother-in-law, a physicist with a mysterious past, tells her that perhaps there is a way to save her baby. What he suggests is something that will shatter every preconceived notion Carly has. Something that will require a kind of strength and courage she never knew existed. Something that will require an unimaginable leap of faith on Carly's part and all for the love of her unborn child. So like I said, I am highly anticipating this one. This is definitely one of the top priority reads for August and I'm so glad that I was able to fit it in with my TBR game this round. All right, so that gave us three books and I'm pretty satisfied because I think I can use all of the books that are priority for these prompts. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and pull one more card. All right, moving the board one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, TBR game. So that actually means that I need to make a selection based on a prompt from somebody else's TBR game. So I would watch somebody's August TBR game and then make a selection based on one of their prompts. All right, y'all, we finally got there. We're gonna have four books from this round and we are going to go ahead and call it a day. All right, and then finally, we got to the last draw of the game. But once again, I drew a number nine and the color yellow and this landed me on TBR game. And so basically what that means is I have to watch somebody play their own TBR game and then use one of the prompts that they get to pick my own read. Now for this, since I am participating in Pick Pongathon and since that is Crystal's TBR game and since the hosts of the readathon are also going to be playing Pick Pongathon in order to select the prompts that we are going to have to read, I'm just going to use one of those prompts to satisfy this. And I do not know what they are going to be by the time this video is edited and uploaded, but of course I will be sure to let you know what prompt and book I selected when I'm doing my next TBR video. All right, everybody. So those are the books that I selected as part of my TBR game, but I do have a couple of others that are on my priority list that I want to get to as soon as possible. The first I have is God of the Woods by Liz Moore. Oddly enough, this book is also set in the 1970s. So I have three books currently that are at least partially set in the 1970s, which I think is a little weird. I am very interested to get to this one because I really enjoyed Long Bright River by Liz Moore, and I think that this is another one that's going to be right up my alley. As I've mentioned multiple times, I am trying to read Book of the Month books as soon as they come into me, so these are always high priority for me. On that same note, I have Bad Tourists by Carol Carver. This is another tropical thriller from Book of the Month that I definitely need to get to. I'm kind of going into this one with low expectations if I'm being honest, but I definitely have to read it for yet another project that I'm doing. All of the projects are happening right now, y'all, but this again is another priority. All right, so those are all of the books that I currently physically have that are going to be a priority, but I also want to go ahead and include The Lost Story by Meg Schaefer, as well as House of Glass by Sarah Pacannon in here as well, because those are books that are going to be for sure coming to me in August, along with any other books I get to add for August Book of the Month box 
box, but of course I don't know what those are yet either. Also, like I said, I impulsively decided to start a new reading project that is likely going to have multiple videos associated with it, assuming that I continue with it. We're going to see. I'm definitely in the mood to continue with it right now. So even though these are not necessarily top priority because this is going to be a project that is spread out over several months, they're definitely on my to-do list, right? Because they are going to be read for a project. So a lot of these are already on hold at my library and if they come in, they're going to get read. So needless to say, I have a bunch of books that I need to be getting to and I need to be getting to them very, very soon. All right, everybody, that is it. That is my TBR for August. Please comment down below and let me know if you have read any of the books that I currently have on my TBR or any of the priority reads that I hope to pick up soon. Also, let me know if you are participating in Pick Pongathon. I will be sure to leave Crystal's announcement video down below so that you can check out all the details and perhaps join if you are interested. Or if you've made it to the end of the video and you are not feeling chatty, but you want to let me know that you were here, go ahead and leave me a red solo cup emoji if there is one. If there's not, go ahead and leave me a ping pong emoji in honor of Pick Pongathon. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I typically post two videos a week, one on Wednesdays, one on Sundays, and I would love to connect with you in any of those future videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which you can always find linked down below along with any books featured in the video. Until next time, y'all. Bye.